Hello, I'm Lori Byer Kropensky. I am the Director of the Information Policy Analysis Division of the Minnesota Department of Administration, or IPAD. More information about IPAD is available on our website at www.ipad.state.mn.us. Minnesota Statute Chapter 13, the Data Practice Act, gives individuals the right to gain access to government data. This presentation is a quick overview that explains how to make a proper data practices request and how a government entity should go about responding to that request. To begin, it is important to point out that there are two types of data requests. One type of request is made by a member of the public, and the other is a request made by a data subject. A data subject is a human being the government has data about. In making a data practices request as a member of the public or as a data subject, many of the guidelines are the same. Assume you are the individual making a request for government data as either a member of the public or as a data subject. The first step in making either type of request is to identify the, the appropriate person to whom your request should be made. This person is the government entity's responsible authority. The responsible authority is the person in the government entity who is responsible for data practices requests. For shorthand, we call that person the RA. The RA may also appoint designees to respond to data requests. It is the responsibility of the entity to inform you of the correct person within that entity to make your request to if a designee rather than the RA is responsible for responding to a request. Minnesota Rules 1205.0200 subpart 13 details the responsible authorities for state government such as the state agencies, constitutional offices like the Secretary of State or the Attorney General and the University of Minnesota or Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. The rules in subpart 14 detail RAs for local levels of government such as cities, counties, school districts, nonprofit, and social service agencies. Once you know who the RA is, check with him or her and ask for the data practices access procedures. Government entities subject to the Data Practices Act are required to have access procedures both for members of the public and for data subjects that describe how to access data. In their procedures, entities should have the name and address of the RA. In addition, the procedures will let you know whether a request must be on a special form or done in writing. Many government entities will detail any special rules they have as well as other issues that are important for you to know in making a request. Even if the government entity does not require it, it is a good idea to put a request in writing. This way, both you and the government entity will have documentation of what was requested and when the request was made. When you make your request, be clear that you are making it under the Data Practices Act. Let the government entity know whether you are making the request as a member of the public or as a data subject. Make sure that you ask for data instead of asking questions. The Data Practices Act only requires government entities to respond to actual requests for data. For example, why did the county board decide to end the park program is a question that the entity is not required to respond to. Compare that question to the statement, I would like all the data about why the county board ended the park program. The second statement is a request for data that requires a response. When making re a request, try to be as specific about the data as possible. Let the government entity know if the request is to look at the data or for copies of the data. Now here's where the process is different depending on whether or not you make a request as a member of the public or as a data subject. When you make a request as a member of the public, the government entity can't require you to identify yourself and say why you want the data. You can decide whether to identify yourself. If you don't give your identity, you may need to provide the government entity with some other contact information for when the data are ready or if there are any questions. Under Section 1305, Subdivision 12, the government entity can ask you for identifying or clarifying information to facilitate access to the data. When you make a request as a member of the public, the Data Practices Act and its rules require entities to respond to a request in an appropriate and prompt manner and within a reasonable amount of time. A reasonable amount of time really depends on the request. Is it a large or complex request or is it a simple request that the entity gets all the time, like for copies of meeting minutes or legislative reports? If you make a request as a data subject, the government entity will need to verify in some way that you are who you say you are before giving access to private data. 
an entity has the responsibility to make sure only the appropriate people see not public data. The access procedures for data subjects should detail what is needed to verify an identity. The time to respond to a data request is also different if you are the data subject. If you are the data subject, for example, if I were to make a request for my driving record at the Department of Public Safety, the response time is immediately, if possible, or within 10 business days. Now assume that you are an employee of a government entity working to respond to a data practices request. It is important to think about the following items after you receive a request. The first thing you should do is review the request. I know it sounds simple, but it's an important step. As you review it, look to see if the person is requesting data or asking questions. As I mentioned earlier, you don't have to answer questions. Of course, you may decide you want to answer the questions for a variety of reasons, but there's no requirement to do that. Who is the request from? Is it a member of the public or a data subject? You now know that it makes a difference on how much time you have to respond. Was the request made to the right person? If not, tell the requester who they need to contact. Do the data exist in the format being requested? To be subject to the Data Practices Act, the data must be recorded in some format, like on paper, in a letter, or a report, a DVD, or a videotape. The government entity doesn't have to create data to respond to a request. An example would be the entity has a paper copy and the requester wants an electronic copy, or the entity has data in Word and the requester wants the data in Excel. An entity does not have to create the data for a requester. Do you understand the request? If you don't understand the request, you should contact the requester and get clarification. Clarification should be sought as soon as reasonably possible. It would not be appropriate to wait several weeks before contacting the requester to say you don't understand the request. An entity should be careful in how they ask for clarification because of the prohibition I discussed earlier about not requiring someone to justify their request. This is the part where government and requesters need to work together to make sure that they both understand what is being requested. Let's assume the request was to the right person, the ent entity understands who it's from, and what the requester wants. The next thing to think about is how are the data classified? If you have public data, you know anyone can have it. So you respond back to the requester, here's your data, or here's the reasonable place and time you can see the data. If a member of the public requests data and you have determined that the data are classified as not public, you must respond that the data are classified as not public and the requester can't have access. When denying access to data, you must cite the specific statutory section temporary classification or federal law that classifies the data as not public. Making a general statement such as you can't have this because of data privacy is not an appropriate response. A government entity can charge requesters for copies of data. There are materials on iPad's website that detail how to figure out copy costs, but remember the government can never charge the requester for just inspecting or looking at data. Here's a summary of possible responses from a government entity to a data request, most importantly remembering to respond to every request. We don't understand your request, please clarify it. The data are ready, here are the copies you requested, or this is when you can come see the data. The data you requested do not exist. The data aren't government data. The data exists, but this section of state or federal law prevents you from seeing the data. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this session. Please feel free to make the most of iPad's web resources and contact us when you need additional help on these issues.